Okay, well, welcome everybody to Monday Night Masterclass. This is our very first masterclass, and we're so excited to have you all here. Um, tonight, we have a very special guest. Uh, Bethany Anderson is here to talk to us about the power of sharing your story. And as you know, here in the flutter, um, as you rise, you know, as you go through the process of personal development and you say yes to the cocoon and you let the transformation take place and you let go of the woman who was created by fears, failures, and imperfections, and you say yes to step into your call, your story is so important. And we just unveiled a brand new class in the flutter. Uh, it's called A Butterfly's Guide to Writing Her Story. So this is perfect timing to have Bethany on tonight. And then you can go in the flutter later and you can uh, go through the module of uh, how to write your story uh, from a butterfly's perspective. And so this is just um, right on time. Telling your story is so important because, uh, you know, science shows that some incredible things happen when you tell your story. And so this is really, really uh, an important piece of the journey. And you know we don't tell our story because maybe we feel shame or or blame or regret or disappointment in some way, and it keeps us from telling our story. So one of our passions here in the flutter is for you to be able to tell your story. And we're so excited to have Bethany to share her story and her journey, and to um, just really teach us another way to be able to share our story. So just a little housekeeping um, as we get started, we'd like you to type your questions in the chat box and we'll answer them at the end. Um, this is a little bit different than our weekly meetings. Uh, so to in honor of our first master class, if you will type your name and email in the chat, chat box, we're going to put your name in the drawing. We're gonna give away a free Flutter t-shirt and we're gonna give away a signed copy of Bethany's book, which I know she's gonna tell us all about. So um, get your email and your name in the chat box so that we know who all's here. And then we'll be announcing that winner on Facebook and we will email you if you're the winner and we will uh, send you your prizes. So welcome everybody, thanks for being on. Uh, this is gonna be a fun night. So. Without further ado, I want to bring on our very own Lacey, and she is going to introduce her friend um, that she has so graciously introduced me to, Miss Bethany Anderson. So Lacey, take it away. So I'm so excited tonight that all y'all get to know my friend Bethany a little bit better. She um, is a very important part of my personal story. I met her um, about five years ago, and she is just a living, breathing example of what it means to be a light in this world. And she's amazing. And she is a true Renaissance woman. She is a fantastic artist, writer, singer, speaker. Um, she just, she's just has all, she's just so gifted and so talented and she uses all those gifts for God's glory. And I was privileged to get to publish her book and she's going to tell you more about that. Um, I did a full on, um, nagging campaign in order to be one of the people that got to beta read it and kind of edit it a little bit for her. And then, um, as luck would have it, I learned how to publish books and it just worked out that we got to partner on that together as well. And, um, Anyway, she is a master storyteller herself, and I am going to turn it over to her. Awesome. Thank you, Lacey. I hope I can live up to all of your accolades. Um, <laughs> but hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here, and I'm really sad I can't see your faces, but the great thing is I can see all of your names over here, and so I know you're here with us. Thank you for giving up your time on a Monday night to hang out with me and Angela and Lacey. I know you guys do this often, but as I mentioned, tonight's uh, format's a little bit different, so bear with us. We're trying to figure this out, and um, anyway, we're here to have fun, but we're also here to learn, and I hope that you walk away encouraged and inspired, and uh, really what we're here talking about is story. 
So we all have a story and story matters. And I want you to know that your story matters. So before we jump in, I just have a question for you. Um, one of the things uh, that I want to tell you just quickly uh, about my, I'm going to give you a little context about who I am, a season that I'm in right now. And then I want to ask you a question. So first of all, um, I was a missionary for 10 years overseas. I lived in five different countries and along the way have collected a lot of stories, as you can imagine. Um, storytelling has been in my blood my whole life. If you ask my parents, I was always telling grandiose stories. In fact, I was a little bit of a white liar. Um, I had my friends convinced that I was on a professional roller skating team and I even like made a bag to like trick my friend that it was my roller skating bag and then I got in trouble with some friends one time that I convinced them that my parents bought me a potbelly pig named Eclipse. He was black and white um, at the State Fair of Texas about this time gosh, I don't want to age myself, but a really long time ago to the point that my friends were on their way to my house and um, to meet my pig. And I had to call them and say, I was telling you a story. <laughs> so I was always getting in trouble with stories. But here's the thing. I love story and I connect with story. I know we all connect with story, but I also realize that it can be daunting for people. So uh, type Yes, that's me. If you are a little bit nervous about talking about how to share your story. So just type in the chat box, make sure you type it to all panelists and all attendees and just say, yes, I'm a little bit nervous because um, as a storyteller, this is something that's kind of new to me. So one of the things I'm doing right now is, um, yes, I see you, Joyce and Sylvia and Catherine. Yes, oh, some of us are a little bit nervous. Um, because it puts us in a vulnerable position. But here's the thing is a uh, vulnerability is our ace card with people. Um, I don't say that as a form of um, manipulation or as like a tactic uh, to connect with people. But the reality is, is vulnerability is attractive because when we share the realness of who we are, people are really attracted to that. So um, one of the things that I'm currently doing right now is I'm training to become a spiritual director. And that's just someone who sits with you and helps, um, helps create space with you to see what God is doing and what he's saying and how he's moving. And so I am learning so much through this process. But in the process, one of the people that I'm directing was like, I don't want to share my story with you. It freaks me out. And this is somebody that I've known for a long time. So I just want to recognize that sometimes this is a hard topic for people. Um, but hey, we're here, we're all together, and we're going to make it through. So um, I would love your comments and interactions as much as possible. It makes me feel like you're right here in the room with me um, in my little studio here at my house. But um, I learned something about story a couple years ago. So I mentioned I was a missionary for a long time overseas. And about five years ago, I was at a conference in Germany. And one of my um, bosses was about to go on stage and um, teach. And uh, he got on the stage and he said, I did a little bit of an experiment sitting in the back of the room. And I want you guys to know that in all the amazing speakers we've had, I've sat at the back of the room, there's hundreds of people in the room, and I've noticed that when you are, uh, when there's a speaker up there and he's teaching or she's teaching, people are diligently taking notes. They are trying to write as fast as possible. There's so many gems of wisdom being dropped. Um, and he said, but here's the thing, as soon as someone, anyone on the stage launched into a story, all the heads went from this to locked gaze on the speaker. And that's one of the things that story does is it like lifts our head. It lifts our body posture because there's something innate in us that connects with story in a way that we don't necessarily connect with quotes or statistics or sort of academia but a story we can all relate to. There's something universal about telling a story. So why is it that our heads lift? It's because we engage and we all love a good story. So what is story? Um, stories are recognizable patterns where we find and attach meaning. 
Um, as a side note, I just remembered this. Um, if you scroll up in your chat bar over, if you pull it up on your screen, you will see a link that, a that Lacey posted at 8.05. And it says, these are the class notes, again, for all of you who jumped on. So if you click on that link, feel free to go take a moment, go to the chat, click on the link now. You are going to come to a document that looks like this. It's a PDF. Um, it says the power of story and maybe backwards on your screen right now. Um, this is just something to follow along. Um, you can print it out on your computer. Um, it's just a little bit of a guideline. And um, the reason I'm mentioning it now is because we're launching into just talking about like why story, what is story, and that's the first blank there. So it's just a thing for you to use as a guide. Um, as we go through, that might be helpful for you. And if it's not, take your own notes, however you like. Um, and we'll go from there. Um, but again, that's in your chat and it's in the it's in the link there. So just wanted to let you guys know that. Okay, so what is story? Let me go back to that. Stories are recognizable patterns where we find and attach meaning. So we know that in theory. We all know what a story is. But why do stories matter? Okay, this is where I would love some interaction from you. Just type something in the chat box. Why do you think stories matter? Why are we so connected and attached to meaning through the stories that we hear and share with others? There's no wrong messages and I'm gonna scroll down to, okay, perfect. Okay, Lacey reposted the link. Thank you, Lacey. Joy says, it looks like Joy, I think that may be Joyce. Um, helps us connect to the speaker. Yes. Makes you real. Awesome. Makes the person telling the story real. Okay. So there's that like vulnerability authenticity thing. So stories matter because they build connections between us, but they also literally physically build connections in our brain. So we, if you know anything about the left brain and the right brain, I am a total like right brain. Lacey mentioned, I'm an artist. Like you can see this wall behind me. I love color. I paint, I write, I sing. If it's creative, like I have my hands in it. Um, and physically what happens in our brain is that's like our right side of the brain houses that more kind of creative, imaginative dream side. Um, but stories as much as they are that, they also are logical and linear and they're structured to them. And so that's the left side of our brain. And so when we use story, it actually engages the whole part of our brain, which is really important for the way that we operate in the world and with each other. Michelle says, um, transparency minimizes isolation. Ooh, that is a tweetable line. Thank you, Michelle, that's awesome. So stories matter, they help us build connection. They help us find and attach meaning outside of ourselves. I already talked about this. Um, they help us connect to something deeper than us. They engage us. They draw us in that whole concept of like, you're listening to a speaker and they tell a story and you lift your head and you're just locked in. They cause us to wonder, which again goes back to that right brainer thing. Speaking of Sylvia, I love that. I'm like, again, total right brainer. Um, but I like the left brain too. Um, thank God for both, literally. Um, so again, they give us connection and they take us on a journey. How many of you love to go on a journey? This is like a, this is like a catchphrase in like the 2010s or whatever, as in 2010, all the way through like 2019 and 2020. We talk about journey. We talk about this sort of progression of traveling and journeying and growing with someone. The word journey has such an association to like, um, forward progression. Um, and so, they help us wonder and take us on a journey with people. Um, we can feel through story. We relate. We empathize. We learn. We're challenged. We're sad. We're happy. Um, there's all these emotional things that happen to us. Um, sorry, I have an update popping up on my computer inconveniently timed. Um, they scientifically engage the whole brain. I mentioned that earlier. The left brain and the right brain work together when we tell stories, um, especially when we write our stories down, which we'll talk about later. 
they free our minds literally to create. There's something that happens neuro neurologically when we tell a story. It takes us into that holistic brain again, and that helps bring freedom, and it kind of like balances out the way that we use our brain. So there is like a whole science about this. In fact, one of the books that I'm reading for my spiritual direction class, I'll just throw it in as an amazing resource, is called um, Anatomy of the Soul. It's by Dr. Kirk Thompson. I'm going to reference a couple of quotes from him. It is amazing. It's about how neuroscience and faith go together, but he talks a lot about storytelling and telling our story and the power of that. The other thing that story does that I had never thought about myself, um, actually, because I was inspired by this book, um, is that it reaches into our future. So one of the things that um, this, this man, Dr. Kurt Thompson says, is that story helps us um, create the future and memory helps create our future. Um, and that's kind of an interesting concept. What, but what this, the idea around that is that um, our memories aren't actually present. Like our memories are only present when we're thinking about it in the moment. Like a memory doesn't actually last in the past. It doesn't exist in the past because all we have is the present. And so when we tell our stories, and when we learn to retell our stories and bring different perspectives, and sometimes that's a redemptive perspective of pain or things that have happened, um, then it helps us see our stories from a new perspective. And with that new perspective, we launch into the future in a different way. Now we could spend a lot of time just talking on one, um, that subject right there. That is like, for me, kind of like a mind blowing concept. But again, as I'm training as a spiritual director, one of the things that we talk a lot about is we're helping people retell their stories from God's perspective, um, as much as, as we can connect with him at that level. Um, so anyway, um, that is why we tell story. We could go on. You, you probably have way more reasons than what I just said. Um, and so, oh, sorry, you guys are asking about the book. Okay. This is Anatomy of the Soul by Kurt Thompson, MD. And uh, I can get that to Lacey later if I'm going too fast on it. But here's the thing. I want to tell you a little bit on about my story. So um, I mentioned my context. I grew up in Texas in a pretty conservative church. I was, um, I came to know the Lord when I was seven years old. And then I felt a call to ministry, vocational ministry, um, when I was 13 years old. And part of that was, um, I was at a church camp in Oklahoma. And there was a preacher, he was a missionary, actually. And he was preaching a sermon on how God could call you. And I remember I like sat on my hands on this cold metal bench and I was like, I do not want to be called to be a missionary or to be in ministry. And I just remember the guy saying, God could call you to Africa and you to Africa and you to Africa. And I remember thinking all the missionaries I know are like so weird. They smell funny. They dress funny. I don't want to go to Africa. So sat on my hands, kind of closed off, like, please, God, don't call me. Well, you know where the story's going, right? So um, by the end of the service, I just had this burning fire in my heart, and I jumped up at the end when they did the altar call, um, and I ran down to the front. It just so happened that my very best friend was sitting next to me, and she ran down the front as well, and we both felt called into ministry, and my mom was at the church camp. Her mom was at the church camp, so we swapped moms, and um, the other mom counseled each of us, and that was really cool, and that was 25 years ago um, this May, and um, I tell you that story because at the time when I was called to ministry, I grew up in a conservative church, and I thought, well, all I can do is, like, move and be a missionary, or maybe I could work with the children, or I just, I, I, I couldn't see the way ahead and that there would be a different way to do ministry as a woman, um, in my church. And so part of my story is like wrestling and flushing out what does it mean to be a woman with a strong personality, with a lot of opinions, with a loud voice, um, if anyone's resonating with like any of the things I'm saying, please say holla <laughs> into the chat box or you can say yes. 
I mean, if this is speaking to you, if you know that you, that you have opinions and a loud voice and you're a woman and it's like, thank you, Michelle Holla. I love it that you wrote that actually. Yes. Thank you guys. Like, like you get what I'm saying. Like we live in a culture where, um, women have just been oppressed in a lot of ways. And maybe that's not all of your backgrounds. Maybe for some of you, it is your background. For me, that was part of my story. And, um, just kind of believing that God had a plan and that he had a different way forward for me, that I was different from all my friends. Like I'm going to be 40 in May and I'm still single. I've never been married. I have lived all around the world. I have traveled and done all these amazing things, but even to this day, my life is very different than most of my peers. Um, and I consider that an honor and a blessing, but it's been a hard road to walk. Um, it feels lonely at times, but here's the thing. Like, I know that I know that I know God has called me to use my voice. And because he's called me to use my voice, he's called me to tell my story. So part of my story is this kind of growing up with this like ceiling of oppression over me. That's like, well, you're really great, Bethany, but um, you're a little bit too loud or you're a little bit too colorful or you're a little bit too out of the box or, well, there's not really a place for you here. Like we, we love you. We think you're great, but like you're a woman. So what are you doing? And you definitely can't speak here. And um, even in leading worship, like, oh, you always have to lead with a guy. Like, it was all this thing. So I am um, a little, you're a little too Jesus. Yep. Heard that one a lot, especially from guys. Um, you're too intimidating. That's a whole nother story. Um, anyway, so I was living in London. I was doing mission work. And I remember I had this male pastor who just was like, listen, I believe in your voice. And I believe in your story. And I believe in the way that God speaks to you. And I want to give you opportunities to preach. Now, I went to Hillsong Bible College for two years, um, about 10 years ago, and it, that was the first time ever that I realized that maybe as a woman I could preach, that maybe that was like a thing, um, and in fact, it was a thing that I saw women that were like co-pastors with their husbands, and they preached, and I actually felt like God was calling me to do that. I had a fire shut up in my bones, talks about that in Jeremiah 20, it talks about like the fire is shut up in my bones and I can't not talk about God and I can't not share his word. Um, and so that's what I felt like. And so when I went to England and this pastor was like, Hey, I want you to tell your story and I want you to preach. I was like, what is, no, I can't do this. I was so scared, but here's the thing. I want to share a story of what happened to me. Um, it was my very first Sunday to preach. I got in my car. I drove to this sleepy little church in the middle of an English a village basically in the middle of nowhere outside of London and it was a small church and I got up and I preached and I remember I was preaching and feeling like time didn't exist that I was in this like time warp they say that when you're doing the thing you're created to do that feels like time just isn't there how many of you have had that experience I'm sure lots of you um and after I finished my sermon I started packing up my stuff and there was a couple people that came to the front of the congregation that said, you know, you know, they wanted to thank me and, you know, congratulate me, whatever the accolades they give you when you preach. And, um, I was talking to these people and then I looked over and I saw this little old man and he was, um, he was very short and he was bent over and he just was waiting for me, uh, silently in line. And, he waited his turn and after the people in front of him left, he reached out and he grabbed my hand and he looked up. I kind of bent down to get in his face and he looked up at me and, um, he said, my name is Alan and I just want you to know that I wasn't sleeping while you were speaking. My eyes were closed the entire time you were talking because every single word that you said mattered and I needed to hear from your voice this morning. And then with a very toothless grin, he reached down and kissed my hand. And that was all I could do not to like burst into ugly tears. Um, I felt so validated in that moment and I grabbed my stuff and I, I thanked him. I grabbed my stuff. I walked to my car. I got in my car and I completely lost it. 
because when I was in my car, I was driving and I was just thanking God for this incredible opportunity and for this amazing honor to be able to use my voice to point people to him and to love them through the words he'd given me. And God said to me, Bethany, I am Alan and I am kissing your hand. And for me, that story, that moment was all the validation that I needed. Um, I don't know how many of you have seen what's been going on this last weekend with some leadership in the Christian world. Um, and it, it involves Beth Moore and I don't want to get into all that, but here's what I know for me personally, like God has put this call in my life. He's put a call on me to use my story for him. And it's no man or no woman that can tell me I can or can't. And so I want to say to you, if you're, if you're listening here and you're wondering if your voice matters and if your story matters, it does not because I'm telling you it does and not because Angela or Lacey um, is telling you, but because God is actually telling you and your story really matters. And so don't be silent. Don't run from the pain of it. Don't run from the fear. Don't let it shut you down because that's what the enemy uses. He uses fear to hold us back, but run full speed ahead into telling your story. So speaking of telling your story, um, I don't know about you, but, um, I, don't have a great memory. So I've written this book, um, not Anatomy of a Soul. That's not the book I wrote. This is my book right here, Kiss My Fish. This is the one that if you put your email in and all that, you have a chance to win. It's a collection of stories um, from my life and travels. And every story is um, becomes a metaphor for faith and uh, like speaks of a truth about who God is or where he was in a situation in my life. And it's really just to inspire hope and encourage people. Um, I also have a podcast called The Hope Adventure where I tell stories like this. I also interview people that are doing work around the world um, to build the kingdom. And so I love stories, but the way that I can remember stories is by journaling. Um, I am in an un I can't even talk. I am an obsessive journaler. I have probably 35 journals from the time that I was like 18 years old. Um, and so when I wrote this book, it wasn't because I had this amazing memory. It's because I journaled. I journaled the significant things that God was saying. So when I tell these stories in this or my podcast or even now, it's, it's because I've written them down. And remember what happens with our brains when we use the left brain and the right brain together? It like syncs up and works holistically. And so when you write your story, there's power for memory and power for remembrance and power in learning how to retell the story and retell the narrative. Um, so journaling is one of the most important um, practices you can pick up. I know that in the flutter, you guys talk about journaling and the power of journaling. So I just want to reemphasize that. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, vulnerability, authenticity is the ace card with people. It's what draws people in and helps them connect. Um, and they get connected because they feel like they're being known and related to by someone else. And so um, there's a lot of ways that you can learn to tell your story. There's a lot of types of questions. There's a lot of methods. Um, I received this amazing gift for Advent probably about mm, eight years ago. It was from my cousin who lives in Denver and it was an Advent book, but what it was, it was actually um, a journey of learning how to tell my story in a different way. So that's what I want to share with you tonight. So if you have your download sheet, um, you can just use this as a reference. I just want to confess right now, this is going to be a really shallow dive into it, what is a really um, big subject. And so um, I'll tell you at the end of this call um, how I can help you in the future if this is just like scratching the surface for you. But it's called the seven stories method. I am going to scoot my screen over so I can see um, my notes a little bit better. But there's seven types of stories um, that we can hone in on in our lives. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through the seven different stories. And then I'm going to give you one question to take away that you could do in your own time to sit with your own story. Okay. So again, you can follow along on that download that's in the link over here, but the first story is our origin story. 
So everybody was born into an already existing story. So it's the prequel to our own story. So the question that comes with this particular one is, what was happening in the family in which you were born? Were you planned? Were you unplanned? Um, were you born into a, a family of a loving married couple? Were you born into a situation where your parents um, couldn't take care of you and placed you for adoption for some reason or another? Um, what did life look like on the scene that you entered into? That's what your origin story is about. The second one is your peace story or your shalom story. It represents a, a place of peace that orients you towards the future. So you kind of picture it of like, what was the garden of Eden in your life? So, and you think about it sort of in the sense of like your childhood and your adolescence, what made you feel safe? Who made you feel safe? And when you think about peace, what brought that in? What was that like? Maybe for you, it was an upbringing um, in a really strong Christian home. Maybe for you, I, I know for me personally, I know for my dad, I know for lots of people I talked to, it was a grandmother. Um, I was very close to all my grandparents, but one of my grandmothers in particular, she was a refuge for me. Um, so maybe it's a relationship. The next one is a story of stirrings. So the heart stirrings that capture our imagination and wonder that call us into something bigger than ourselves. So as a kid, I want you to just take a moment and think about um, what is one thing you could not stop thinking about or dreaming about as a kid? Feel free to type it. This one might be a really fun one to do. Um, I'll start with me. <laughs> when I was a little girl, this is if, for my friends on here that know me, I used to make um, videos in my room. And I would have this one friend that would come over and we would do a talk show called Gossip with the M&Ms. And it's really funny because I've told my mom very recently, like, thank you, Jesus. We didn't have YouTube when I was a kid because I would have been a total fool. I mean, I, I still can be a little bit crazy now, but um, I would have been like living on YouTube all the time. But maybe for you, um, it's, it's something like you always, 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 always loved babies and you were a little kid and now you have lots of kids and you're an amazing mother. Um, maybe for you, it was like, you always had this kind of, um, drive for generosity and you always wanted to give people things or make things for people on um, these kinds of things. Um, feel free to chime in if you have anything. Um, does anyone have anything that they want to put for what did you love as a kid? Tell me what you loved. I want to know. You wanted to be a wife and host parties. Yeah, Nelsa, I've been at some makeup parties you host. We need to have another one because I need some new makeup. But anyway, love you, Nelsa. Anything artsy. I love that. Me too. I, I used to sell artwork on the street corner. Instead of lemonade, I like painted paintings and sold it. And I still sell paintings today. My hairbrush was my mic. And I think it cut out. I was... I don't know what that said, but my hairbrush was my mic. That is, oh, I was a singer. Awesome. I used to dance in my mom and dad's bed and they had this big mirror and I would do the same thing. Hairbrush, I dress in 80s clothes. I mean, it was the 80s. Hello. That is awesome. So those may seem like silly things, but they have like a deep resonance to who you are. You wanted to be a nun, wanted to help the, the poor. That is awesome. So these are things to pay attention to. They may seem like not a big deal now. You're like, oh, I was just a kid. But pay attention to that stuff. That is what the stirring story is all about. Okay, so moving on to, um, I wanted to tell people about Jesus and witness to everyone around. He stirred me. Oh, I love it. See, he knows. He knows from a young age. I told you I was uh, 14 when I got called into ministry, and that's what I'm doing with my life. Um, arrows. Arrows is the story when Chaos and brokenness enters in through various means. So um, it may not have been at a young age. It may have been. It may have been through a loss of a grandparent or from some um, horrific situation that happened to you. Um, all of us have those, those kind of dark things that have entered into our life. We live in a broken, fallen world. Um, and so um, the question with this one is what things, situation, relationship, 
shattered your feelings of being safe or grounded in peace. I find the hard stories are much harder to sit with. It's fun to sit with the fun things. And it's, I'm an Enneagram seven, if you know, like I don't, I, we don't like pain. So um, I have to create space to sit in these places a lot longer than I have to create, or it's, it's harder for me to, than to create space for like the fun stirring kind of stuff. The next one is shadows. What was our response to the chaos and the brokenness that comes our way? How did you deal with that? Um, what, here's the question with this one. What message did this disruption or tragedy or loss speak to your heart? So I know you guys probably know this. You've heard different Christian authors, writers say um, that oftentimes women walk away with one of two messages and it's you're not enough or you're too much. And sometimes it could be both depending on the situation. I know for me, there was seasons of life where I felt like I wasn't enough. And then there was seasons where I felt like I was too much. Um, but those messages typically came through those shadow moments, those moments of um, just disruption and brokenness. And again, these are things that the enemy uses to silence our voice um, and to make us question our identity. We know that our identity is in Christ and the enemy wants to steal that from us. Um, and so these are, again, these are questions that it's, it's good to take the time to sit with. The next story is illumination. Okay, yay, we're getting to like the hope again. So we've kind of gone through the valley into those darker questions and now we're back to the hope. Um, moments where beauty and order are restored and they're full of hope. So what situation or relationship brought revelation to you about the truth of who you actually are? Like what were those like God watershed moments? What are the moments where you like put a marker in the stone? Um, and in this, a marker is a stone to put a marker in the sand to say, um, this is something that I'm standing on. Cause I know it's true about myself. Um, you know, I know that I love people and I love them well, and that's not too much. That's not a message of being too much. That's a message of being exactly accurate as God created me to be. Um, maybe it's, um, maybe it's some sort of spiritual awakening that you had. I know for me, again, I grew up kind of in a conservative environment and I went to a charismatic Bible college that I didn't know was charismatic until I got there. That was kind of an awakening moment for me and absolutely radically life-changing. I saw myself as a woman in a, in a way that I'd never seen myself before. Um, so, you know, it could be a variety of things. It could be a person that entered into your life, somebody that's kind of like a guide, um, or, um, just somebody that's like a mentor to you that, that really spoke truth. Um, I know that that's what Angela and Lacey are doing for many of you right now. I know from Lacey's personal experience that Angela very much came in at a season in her life where it was instrumental and life changing for her. Um, so that's what I love about the flutter. This is what these guys are doing. They're passionate about helping you grow. And maybe that moment for you is being a part of the flutter. I love that. Um, the last one is the elixir. Um, the elixir story, um, I think on your paper, I call it something different, the resolve, the resolve or the elixir. It's that return home story where you kind of return to your story with a different per perspective to say, because of all the stuff that I've been through, I now have gifts to offer to others as I live out my calling. So what this becomes is like the Esther moment, the Esther moment where it's like, for such a time as this. So I have been called, who said it earlier? Um, Sumar. I've been called, I've, I've been wanting to talk about Jesus my whole life. Okay, great. Now, what does that look like for you now? Um, or Catherine, you talked about wanting to be a nun and helping the poor. What does that look like for you now? Nilsa, yes, raising your adopted kids. That is a calling. I know because I have sat across the table from you and listened um, to the challenges that brings. And you know, you have. It's hard. Danger. Question you bring to the table to help give in. The cool thing. 
So in Hebrew, the word manna actually means, what is it? Um, and it was like this flaky kind of stuff that fell from the sky as part of God's provision for the Israelites. And I love this concept because the concept is that God knew exactly what we needed before we knew what we needed. And he knew what they needed. He knew different person. as God then it's it becomes more of those and um at my church we always say God didn't just God didn't cause everything but he uses it right so he doesn't cause all the things that have happened to you, but guess what? He is always going to work things for the good of those who believe. Um, and he's going to take what the enemy tries to use to come against you. And he's going to redeem it and use it for his good. And so this is the power of our stories. Um, it's the power that brings people into change. Your story is never just for you. I think you know that, but I just want to remind you, your story, what you've been through is not just for you. Your voice is not just for you. So for you to cower back in fear and not use your voice is actually um, working against how God wants to use your voice. Because here's the thing, if God is calling you to use your voice and to tell your story, there are thousands of people on the other side of your obedience waiting to hear your story and your voice. And I just feel like some of you need to hear that. You just need to be reminded um, that there's power in your story, um, and that he wants to use your story. So one of my favorite things about Jesus is that he was the ultimate master storyteller. If you think about his teachings in the Bible, the majority of them, um, were, th um, a principle or like a takeaway. Um, I, I talk about my book a little bit like that. Like these are kind of parable parables in a, in a modern way. Um, but I, I read this statistic today about the Bible. I thought this was fascinating. 75% of the Bible is narrative. Like, isn't that amazing? God is such a connector God. I mean, think about the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They live in this like community, this relationship with one another. And the way that he connects with us in his word is through story. 75% is story. And the whole Bible in and of itself, they talk about the meta narrative. What's the big story of the Bible? It's his glory. It's redemption. It's salvation. It's Jesus. It's all threaded through. Um, we could talk about story forever. And I know we don't have all night. I get excited about this. But I just want to remind you that why did Jesus tell stories so much? He used them as a catalyst for change. Plain and simple. He met people where they were but he didn't want to leave them there, but he used story to engage their hearts and their left brain and their right brain. Cause they had all that back then too. I know we don't think scientifically about the people in the Bible days, but, um, but they were human just like us. They argued, they, they fought, they had dissension. They had the arrow stories and the shadow stories and they had the stirring stories. Um, but Jesus called people to change through story. So here's where I'm going to leave us now, and then we'll leave some time for some questions. Um, I want to know, what is your story? What's your story? How can you sit with it? How can you help yourself retell your story? And I say help yourself when actually it's asking God to help you retell your story. And how will you tell that story? For some of you, it may be writing. For some of you, it may be speaking. For some of you, it may simply be grabbing a blank journal and just starting a journal, starting a page where you just write out your stories. Some of you may want to jump into the fire of podcasting, which is super fun and a lot of work. Um, but how are you going to tell your story? So um, I'll kind of end there, but before we go, I want to um, share with you one of the ways I told you, one of the ways that I tell my story is through my podcast. Um, it's called the hope adventure. You can find it on Spotify or, um, iTunes, wherever you listen to your podcast. But I also um, have a special deal for you guys tonight. If you want a copy of my book, um, if you, you see the screen that Angela just put up, you can um, 
email me at info at jbethanyanderson.com. Send me your name and your address. I'll actually say this. Send me the name of the person that you want me to write a personalized um, inscription to. Um, I would love to personalize it. I have this thing of like, I'm such a people person. I don't, I don't just like to sign a book. Like I like to write you a note and I like to write something that means something. So um, if you want that, um, follow this information here. Maybe take a screenshot of this um, or a picture with your phone. So you can remember, you can send me $20 to PayPal. I will ship this to you. But most importantly, send me an email so I can have the name um, and the address of the person that you want me to sign this for. I'm happy to do that. Um, the other thing is, is I told you guys that um, this was going to be a really shallow dive into just this particular method of storytelling. Um, and so I have, uh, if you go to my website, jbethanyanderson.com forward slash work with me, um, I have got um, a list of a variety of calls that I do just to help people. So I talk a lot about singleness um, and strategy for purpose, passion, and purity in the world we live in that is much needed in the church culture. So um, if that appeals to you, but really what we're talking about here today is story. So I offer a story consulting call. What I do is I help you unleash the power of your story. And I do that through some of the methods um, that I've just talked about with the seven stories. And it's a much deeper dive and just helping you harness like kind of what is that arrow? What is that shadow story? And then now where have you landed um, in the resolve and the elixir of it and the illumination of it? Um, and so that, that is what that's about. If you want to do that, go there to my website. You can um, schedule a call with me. Um, it's got all my options of when I'm available. And if you type in the word flutter, all caps right there on the screen, um, you can get a discount on that call. And I would love to connect with you. Um, and help you unleash the power of your story. Because like I said, that's what we've been talking about tonight. All of our stories carry power. So I will end there and let these ladies take over um, with some questions that you guys may be asking. Wow. Well, I just want to say thank you, Bethany. What an incredible um, presentation and story that you have shared with us. And this is right where we're at. And uh, just, I know it's gonna really bless all the women of the flutter. And um, I would say there are probably five or six women in the flutter that are currently writing their books. Um, wow. And uh, we have uh, one of our flutter members is actually, um, she just, published her book with the help of Lacey. Yeah. And um, so she is in Europe right now, so she's not on this call, but um, we are just, I know this is speaking right directly to um, a lot of the women here. Sylvia mm -hmm. says, wow, ugly cry, good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> We've all had those moments, Sylvia. Yay, yeah. you for your honesty. <laughs> yes. So let's see, Lacey, do you have some questions? Um, do you have any questions that came up? Do you have any questions uh, to ask Bethany? Um, post them in the chat box right now. Bernita said to tell everyone hello. Aww. Is Bernita the one, she's the one you just published her book, Lacey, right? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. So they're on a trip. Show them your book, Bethany. Hold your book up. So this is Bethany's book. It's called Kiss My Fish. And Bethany actually painted the artwork on the cover. A little insider information there. Wow. <laughs> and um, so that's like her book and that's her original artwork. She is an artist in every way. Um, and sometimes when you're an entrepreneur, you have more time than money. So you just do all the things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I know. I designed my book cover too. I totally hear that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, what are some of the, you've mentioned just a little bit, but if you could go into more detail about some of the exercises you use to kind of like practice writing, like just daily habits besides like, I know we do, we give journaling prompts to the people in our flutter. Yeah. I love and so, you know, is there anything kind of outside the box more creative than just journaling that you do? Um, I think um, one of the things that I've learned um, 
I mean, for me personally, I do, I do a lot of journaling. I also, Lacey, you know this, I verbally process a lot. And so I tell stories over and over and over again so that they're almost ingrained. Um, I think that if you, if you want to be a speaker, um, I think that's a really good way to practice is like, it's kind of like, I treat it like, uh, I'm like a story evangelist in the sense of like, oh my gosh, you won't believe this thing that happened to me. And I just like repeat it. And I'm also the kind of person that I attract a lot of crazy stories. Um, but one of the other things is I think a, a really good exercise to do for, um, for you guys here at the flutter is to practice. This is going to take some time. So just know this, but practice writing out your story. Um, set aside, you know, 30 minutes, even just as a start write it out because when you write your brain has to tune into it in a different way it goes back to that left brain right brain thing um and when you write it out you actually see things threaded together like you don't necessarily when you're speaking it out and then the second step is to share that with someone perhaps in the flutter maybe you guys could do that as like you practice sharing your story we should host like uh storytelling sessions yeah like for everyone to pause on a zoom call and like take turns Yes. And what happens is when you tell your story and you begin to refine it, then, then if you tell it in a really trusted environment, people hear things that you say that they can bring insight into, um, that can help when we were talking about the whole learning, how to retell your story from like a redemptive perspective, that's where that's really, really helpful is when somebody can hear your story and go, Hey, did you notice that? Or I noticed this in your story. Tell me more about that. Um, and those can be those moments where we go, oh, that's the story that I need to be telling because that's the story that really resonates with people where they are. And that's part of my story that connects with theirs. Um, so I don't know if that answered your, your, your. Yeah, we have another. Yes, it does. And okay. I think you gave me a really good idea for an exercise we can do with this uh, speaking your stories out loud that would be helpful yeah. for me personally, and I think for Angela, it's something we've talked about. And um, But Nilsa has a question here. It says, if you have a story that you want to tell, um, but, want to honor, but want to honor family members, but it's a big part getting to be the, it's a big part getting to be the experience to know how to minister to orphans. How do you do this? Um, so if you, story you want to tell, but you want to honor your family members. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what you're asking. Like if there's like, so like, are you saying like sensitive topics or? Yeah. Yes. So if it's a big party, I think I, I'm getting the, uh, the message that my internet's unstable. So, uh, Angela, you might want to take over. Okay. Um, can you hear me? No, yeah, we, I, we can hear you. Yeah, but yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, Nilsa, to um, I, I understand that that question, um, and I had to really consider that. So, um, Bethany, go ahead. You want to speak to that? Yeah, I mean, that's hard. I have a friend who um, she just wrote a story, and um, I, I feel like this actually. I'm in a writing group that um, this this kind of question comes up a lot of like, how do you tell your, sto your story? Because it's your story. But how do you honor the people in the story with you? Um, and I think it depends on the context. I think it depends on the, you know, the format. Are you, are you telling it on a podcast? Um, are you writing it in a book that's going to be like forever written? Are you writing it in the newsletter? Are you writing it in a blog? Like, um, I think there are levels of permission um, and, and depending on what level and what kind of format you're using, there are ways that you would need to get permission. Um, like I said, I have a friend that just wrote a book and she had to get permission. She self published it, but she did it with a, an agency. So they kind of required her to do some stuff, but um, she went into it knowing that there was going to be some tension with her family. And I would say, honestly, for the most part, 75% of those tensions resolved and 25% of them are still in tension. But I think this is where the question comes in. You have to know that God's calling you to tell this part of your story and you have to do it with honor, whatever honor looks like to, the, to those people. 
Um, maybe honor looks like changing every single situation, detail, circumstance. Maybe it's telling your memoir under a pen name or something like that. If you're talking about writing a book. Um, and I don't know if you specifically are Nilsa, but, um, I don't know if that answer you are. Okay. Yeah. So, so I don't know. Um, some people wait till later in life to do that so that the people that are part of the story, like aren't part of the story anymore because they've gone on, you know what I mean? So, um, I don't know if that's helpful, but it's, a, that's a tricky question. Um, I would, I would get inside. I mean, Angela, you probably have insight into that as well. Cause you've written too. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, and that's, I really, boy, I really wrestled with that one um, because, um, you know, it is my story, what happened to me, but I was, you know, I, I had to, in order to tell my story, um, there were other people that were a part of my story, the people that hurt me, and um, so one of the things that helped me, though, uh, and, and again, I want to reiterate for all of you to go into the flutter uh, and it's in the third stage. We just put it out and it's how to, how to write your story. Mm -hmm. So I walk you through step by step um, using the hero's journey on how to actually write your story. And one of the things for me, so this is the, this is the way that I wrote my story. The exact thing that we just put inside the flutter is exactly what I used to write my story. And um, what I had to think of for myself was, you know, you've heard me say this before, is I had to ask, uh, instead of blaming, even though I was victimized, what was my contribution? Mm -hmm. I told my story from the point of my contribution and that helped me to, I did say a few statements of fact, but they were statements of fact about the other person of what the, the, um, the harm that was done. It was a statement of fact. It couldn't be, it wasn't just, um, you know, from my perspective. And, and so then I, took that and I, I wrote the story from what was my contribution. And that was that I, I lost myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I had morphed into a false version of who I created to be. And I um, built my identity around a man in the ministry. Uh, and then I built my identity around my misery. And so that, that's how I told my story. And so that that may help you to ask that question, even though that's a very painful question to answer, especially when you've been stuck in blame, you know, it's mm -hmm. really painful to say, well, wait a minute, if I'm looking at my contribution, then I'm letting them off the hook for hurting me, but you're not You're when you, whatever you blame, you hand your power over to. So when you are able to look at your contribution, it really helps you just to stand in your power and, you know, the power that, that has been given to you. You know, the Bible says that, um, He's given us a, a spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. And so it brings you back to your personal mm -hmm. power when you can look at your contribution. And so I was very sensitive because it involved my kids. And I got my kids permission. Uh, I let all of my kids read it before it was published. And I got their permission. And they said, Mom, it's your story. This is not dishonoring. Um, you need to write your story. So that, that's my perspective. And so. Yeah. That's good. Awesome. Well, this has been such a pleasure. Again, Bethany, you are a true joy. And, and thank you. It's your been great. It's just um, the light, the uh, price that shines out of you is so, so bright and so beautiful. And um, Lacey, you know, tonight is our first time meeting and mm -hmm. has always said, um, Oh, Bethany is the, the younger version of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's. <laughs> so. <laughs> I do, I do. She does. Yeah. Um, great company. I am surrounded by great company. Well, so, we love you, Lacey. I'm You're very yes. You me. <laughs> we do. <laughs> so, Bethany, I look forward to spending time with you one-on-one -on -one and getting Same. more. So, thank you so much. Yeah being our guest and, and, you know, let's not forget, Bethany is a part of the flutter. She is your flutter sister. 
So it's true. I'm, I try to be active as much as I can, which isn't always a lot, but I do watch things. I am kind of like stalking a little bit. I try to do some of the journal prompts, you know, all that. I love your prompts. They're amazing. It's so awesome. great. such an awesome. amazing community that you've built. So thank you. Yeah. So, so reach out to Bethany anytime in the flutter because um, I know she's, she's there for you. So, okay. Yes. Uh, we love you all. We appreciate you all. Just be blessed and, um, you know, post in the flutter uh, when, what your takeaways from were tonight. And uh, we will see you all on Thursday for office hours. See you soon. Good night. Bye, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.